There are two things that I think are the keys to success to growing on TikTok in 2024. And I believe that if you do these two things, not growing would almost be impossible. I grew my TikTok to 10,000 followers from zero followers in just about 100 days. So I posted my first TikTok on May 30th and reached 10,000 followers on September 8th, which was exactly 103 days later. Today in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I did it, the two absolute keys for success, and why I believe TikTok growth in 2024 is possible for anyone and everyone. So before we get into all the details and all of the juicy information that everyone is here for, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about myself and my history because I do think that that is important when it comes to how I grew this TikTok. So the first thing to know about me is that this is far from my first rodeo when it comes to social media. I have been doing social media for probably six to eight years now at this point. I am 24 years old and I first started my journey in like 2017, 2018 when I was a senior in high school. And if I'm gonna be honest, I would consider myself a little bit of an expert when it comes to social media and everything surrounding it. And the reason why I consider myself somewhat of an expert is that I run a multi six figure small business in social media. Now this consists of my food blog, wellnessbyk.com and all of the accompanying social media accounts. So a little bit of the stats there. I have a TikTok account for Wellness by K with over 400,000 followers. I have an Instagram account for Wellness by K with over 150,000 followers. And I have a website that gets hundreds of thousands of views every month and millions of views every year. So I think you could say that I know a thing or two about growing social media presences, growing a following, and then eventually monetizing that and making it a career. So this is not all new to me. I feel like I am a pro in the space. So I definitely use that knowledge to do what I did, grow this account to 10,000 followers in just about three months. I kind of felt like I had this hypothesis that if I did these two things that I'm gonna go into detail later on in this video, that I would be able to successfully grow a new TikTok. I feel like this kind of proved my theory and now I wanna share my theory with you guys, tips and tricks, and pretty much the roadmap for exactly how I did this. Why did I wanna make another TikTok when I already had a presence elsewhere? So if we look at Wellness by K, which is my main income, I have the Instagram, the TikTok, and the food blog. It had become very food focused over the last couple of years, like very much focused on the recipes. And I'm very happy that that happened because that is how I was able to grow it into a successful business that it is. It is very successful. And that's because I kind of took the focus away from me and centered it around the food. But now I kind of miss the focus being on me and I want to share about my life. I feel a pull to share about things that I'm passionate about. Like, just in general, I am a person who like could blab on and on and on about the different things that I like to do, my hobbies. I wanted to share everything, but there was nowhere for it to go. So I pretty much decided that I would start fresh, create a new TikTok and share all about me, my life. And then there's also a big focus on health, fitness, wellness, food, because that is what I'm mainly passionate about. It takes up a lot of my time and my energy and my day-to-day -day life. And I'm always thinking about it, always talking about it, always researching and finding new things and experimenting. and that's what I love to do, so that's what I wanted to share, and that is what this TikTok is focused on. So that all brings me to my first point and the first step that I took in creating this TikTok, and the first step that you should take if you also want to grow a TikTok like I did. So that is to pick an initial focus for your account. Now, it doesn't have to be super niche down. You don't only have to talk about fitness. You don't only have to talk about food, but it is smart to pick a focus and a few things that you will be talking a lot about. Mine was very easy to decide. Like I said, it's just my life, which is very focused on health, fitness, wellness, food, things of that nature. So it's a kind of easy umbrella for my account to fit under. And then if you're thinking, well, I don't really know what my exact focus should be on, I would suggest you scroll through TikTok and you take note of what you like to watch. And that is probably the content that you should create. Not only Ways, but that's what I found to be true for me. Like I would always be scrolling, watching girls talk about their life, their daily routines, their productive day routines, their food, what they're eating, how they're working out. And I was like, I want to create that content. So the answer was really easy for me because I just, I pretty much want to create what I like to watch. I feel like that is pretty simple. So that is my first tip. Pick a general focus for your account. Now, if you want your account to just be about you and your day-to-day -day life, that can be the focus. And I'm gonna give you some tips later on in the video for how you can make this like a stronger brand presence, even if you don't feel like you have a strong niche. Okay, now let's do a quick overview of my growth. 
I would say that my growth has been very consistent. If you look at this graph here, it's just a straight line up. There is no real steep incline of growth. It was like I said, pretty gradual, pretty consistent. And I can identify a few key videos that made me grow and brought attention to my account, but they didn't really reflect any insane changes in follower growth here. So I would consider it consistent growth despite those videos and like minor spikes. However, I still am gonna go through those videos right now. I would say there were three very big videos that drove a lot of attention, new followers, likes, comments, shares, all of that to my account. And these videos were honestly posted pretty early on in my TikTok and they are still receiving lots of views, lots of followers from them to this day. So they are pretty evergreen as of now, eventually they might die off, but I'm still receiving growth from them as we speak, even though they were posted months ago. So that's a good indicator that they are very big performers for me. So the first two most popular videos on my account are about green tea. One has 2.3 million followers and one has 1 million followers. Now I essentially was watching a lot of TikTok and like I said, the TikTok that I watch is the TikTok that I like to create. So it's very wellness focused, health, fitness, everything like that. And I was seeing so many people talk about the benefits of green tea. So I posted two videos about green tea. One was a short, literally no effort required video with a trending sound. And I just wrote over it something like, green tea girlies, what are the benefits of green tea? I'm seeing people talk about it everywhere. What should I know? And that was, I think, very good for two reasons. One, it was a topic that was trending. And two, it was a question. So it motivated people to comment, share their advice, share their opinions, share the information about green tea, which just boosted engagement, boosted the video, the video went wild. That is the one with 1 million views. And then the other one was a week later, I shared what I noticed after drinking green tea for a week and that just went crazy as well. So I just think the biggest factor there is that I was creating content around a very trending topic. I'm gonna talk more about trends and viral videos in the next section of this, but first I'm gonna go through the other videos that I consider major drivers. So those two green tea videos, I'm gonna kind of package as one. So we have green tea videos. And then another video, I'll just pop it right here. It was me talking about how walking is so beneficial for weight loss. And I think that this video did well for a variety of reasons as well. One, it was giving advice on a topic that a lot of people seek advice on. I pretty much said like walking 15,000 to 20,000 steps a day is the key to weight loss if you struggle with weight loss, you have to try this, blah, 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 blah. So I think one, it grabs a lot of people's attention because a lot of people want to lose weight. So that was like a tip that they wanted to save, you know, and they're like, huh, maybe I should walk more. So they save it and they think about it, things like that. But then it was also a very controversial video. I got a lot of backlash and people saying that this was like kind of a crazy thing to say. It was too general of a statement. You can't make statements like that because it's not gonna help everyone. So I had a lot of backlash on that video, which I also think boosts engagement. Now I won't really say that I recommend that because while this video was going viral and getting more and more views, it did really stress me out. And I never want you know people to say that my information is bad or unhealthy or anything like that. So it did drive a lot of people to my account and got a lot of views and things like that, but it also did cause a little bit of stress because it was um, controversial. So that is a tactic you could take. People do post crazy videos sometimes to get like comments and responses. That's That was not my intention, but it did kind of end up being a little bit like that. Either way, you can find a couple of tips in here. You can be a little controversial. You can get people talking in your comments or just posting very helpful content, which was my initial purpose in posting that video because that is what I've learned. It really helped me on my own weight loss journey, so I shared that. And then moving on to the third video that I found really helpful in growing my TikTok, and this was actually the first one that I posted that really blew up, and it was the first video that really got people to follow my account, because in the beginning, you're not gonna get a lot of followers, because even if people find your video and they like it on the For You page, they will go to your account and see that you have 50 followers, and they're not gonna follow you, because that is such a low number. So this video really got things rolling for me. I think I posted it like June 10th or something and it was of a viral sound. I don't know if you guys know it, but it's, is anybody gonna match my freak? And it's that song and people posted like crazy things that they did. And I essentially wrote this whole long paragraph about very like niche wellness, fitness girl things, 20K steps, waking up early, Pilates, workout sets, chilling at night, reading, things like that. And I just think a lot of people found it relatable and they liked it and they saved it. And it was a very simple, like, oh, I like that. And also when you post big paragraphs like this, like just describing your vibe and people are like, oh, I like that vibe. They're gonna follow you, look into you, things like that. So those are the major three videos that when I look at my account as a whole have driven a lot of growth. 
Okay, and now let's get into trends and trying to make viral videos and how that can be helpful when starting and growing a TikTok. So I think that this type of video can be very helpful and it is what gave me a little boost in my growth. I think that without these videos, I would not be at 10,000 followers yet. So I do think that they have a place and are helpful, like I said, to get that initial boost because no one wants to follow your account when you have no followers. So videos like this can help you get that like instant gratification of followers. Now the opposite of that is that I don't think that they really build a community who likes to watch your videos, will wait for your videos, will watch anything you post just because it is from you. This is sort of a issue I ran into when I was growing my food TikTok. I grew my food TikTok for Wellness by K to 400,000 followers. And that was all because of viral videos. They were just 30 second videos of recipes, food, action shots, really trendy music, good music behind it, and people liked the food. They saved it and my account grew really fast because all of my food videos were getting millions and millions of views. They were viral videos, but that did not build a loyal following at all. So now, honestly, that TikTok is pretty much dead. I don't know what happened, but because I grew my followers based on viral videos and not on me at all, or like me cooking or anything about me, it's like, my followers, they liked these videos and they followed, but then they had no idea that it was from Wellness by K. They didn't really know what they were following. So now when I post videos on there, like there's no one there. So that is what I did not want to create again. I wanted to stay away from that virality and that like lack of community and lack of actual people who want to follow along with you. And I wanted to build instead a like dedicated, loyal audience and people who really liked my videos. So that is why through this journey, I'm not super focusing on viral moments. I will say that in the beginning, I did have a little bit more of a focus on this. I did make videos with the trending sounds. I did make videos that were easy to save, like instant gratification, instant information. But every time I posted one of those videos, it's kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall or what's that saying you know you're just throwing like a lot of videos out there hoping that one of them will catch and grow your account and that did happen to me a few times and sparked my initial growth but then i think once you get there there's no need to keep throwing the spaghetti at the wall because that's not going to build you a loyal dedicated audience that will like all your videos support your sponsored content if that's eventually what you want to do go to your links like be interested in what you're sharing and that is what i wanted to build i set out to build that sort of following and i'm so happy that i feel like i have i feel like i'm starting to really feel like people care about my videos they care about what i have to say and i feel like i really am starting to grow a little community of people who like the same things as me like morning routines like eating healthy like talking about high protein food all of that and they give me tips i give my audience tips it's a full circle moment you know what i mean i feel like i'm rambling on a bit so i'm gonna sum it up following trends and trying to make viral videos definitely has a place in growing a tiktok i think it is great for initial growth but i wouldn't focus on it too much past that if you want to build a real following like i just previously described also with trending sounds it is pretty easy to do just scroll on tiktok and i'm sure that you will notice the trends of the moment the weekly trends the daily trends the monthly trends and if you find content that inspires you and you feel like you could fit your niche and your focus into that trend, then just save the video, save the sound, jot that little idea down and then make that video tomorrow, the next day, whenever. That is what I would do. I would scroll TikTok for like dedicated like research time, go for like an hour, 30 minutes and just save a bunch of videos that I thought that I could make my type of content into that style video. And then I would write them down and then I would create those videos throughout the week. And that was my strategy for a little bit. And I do think that it's a helpful strategy. Just like I said, I don't think that you should rely on this strategy forever. You could always weave this strategy into your posts if you want to, that would be beneficial. But personally, like I don't find too much joy in doing that. So I have started to stray away from that. Now we're gonna move on from trends and virality and talk about what I think are the two biggest drivers of growth on TikTok in 2024. Okay, so there are two things that I think are the keys to success to growing on TikTok in 2024. And I believe that if you do these two things, not growing would almost be impossible. Essentially growth is inevitable if you do these two things. And it boils down to a simple sentence. Like everything I'm about to say boils down to a simple sentence. Post content that will provide value to viewers at least once a day, every single day, and three to five times a day if possible. Now the two big words here are value and consistency. That is all you have to do. Provide content with value consistently, very consistently. I am not kidding when I say three to five times a day. If you wanna be successful on TikTok, grow your TikTok fast, three to five times a day. But first, let's get into the value part. Posting content of value is probably what I attribute most of my growth to. 
I do think that consistency is important, but if you are posting three to five times a day of content, let's be honest, bad content, content with no value, you are not really going to see any growth, I don't think. You're not gonna really be moving the needle or seeing the numbers that you wanna see. So value in a TikTok video is super important because a lot of times when we are scrolling on TikTok, we're really not gonna like or engage in the video or comment or anything like that unless it's something that we wanna look back on later. Maybe it's a creator that we really like so we just like all of their videos, things like that, but really it's mostly if we wanna look back on it later. Even if that's not the case for everybody, that is how how I scroll on TikTok and I do feel like that's how most people do. I think people occasionally throw likes to a video for no real reason, but if you want saves on a video, comments on a video and people to follow along with you, then that video needs to be providing them value. Essentially, you wanna make videos that people are gonna save or like to reference for later. They're gonna comment for more information. They're gonna comment that they really enjoyed the video and you wanna make videos that are engaging enough, informative enough, entertaining enough that people want to follow along with you. They wanna do more than just watch that video. They wanna watch more videos from you and they want to see everything that you make and create. Now, again, I think that this is an area where my specific focus on my TikTok was good for growth because I post a lot of what I eat in a day, high protein food sources, how I walk 20,000 steps in a day, my workout routine, just foods I like to eat, grocery hauls. So this is very savable, shareable content. People comment on this, they ask for more information, things like that. So my niche, which is food and fitness, is very shareable and savable. So that is kind of in my favor, but you can still use this method for any kind of content you wanna create. That is why you also wanna pick a slight niche and focus that you would consider yourself an expert on because you want people to really feel that you know what you're talking about and they wanna follow along with you for more information on that topic or just more content in that similar vein. Once they see your video on their For You page, they're gonna check you out and see if you have more content like that. And if you do, they will probably follow along because they wanna see it. I wholeheartedly believe that if you have this slight niche, this slight focus on an area that you are an expert in and you just share consistently about that topic, you can grow on TikTok. And that slight niche and focus is very important here because I think where a lot of people go wrong when they start sharing is that there is no reason why people would wanna follow along with you. There's no reason why people would wanna like share your content, especially if you're just posting vlogs and morning routines and things of that nature because when you're posting that, you have to think, why does someone care about my day when they don't know me? You know, if you're not someone special, if you're not already famous, if you don't already have a following, like why are people gonna watch your videos and want more of your videos if you're just posting like your day-to-day -day life? Now, if you're sitting here watching this video thinking, I don't have a niche. I don't care about eating high protein. I don't care about going to the gym. I don't care about walking. I'm just using those examples because that is what I built my TikTok around. But if you are asking yourself those questions, you're thinking there is nothing for me to focus on. There is no niche. I promise you that there is something you can find. First, I would suggest thinking about the big ones. Do you love fashion? Do you love makeup? Do you love health? Do you love fitness? Do you love running? Do you love books? What do you love? And if it's a big category like that, I'm sure there's a niche and a want and a need for it on TikTok. Honestly, I'm sure you know yourself. When you're scrolling on TikTok, like is there a niche that you find yourself in and you want to create that content? If there is, if there's one sticking out to you, just go with that. It is very simple. Now, again, if you're thinking, I don't have a heavy focus on any of those. I like fashion, but I don't think I'm super fashionable. I like makeup, but it's a pretty basic routine. I work out sometimes, but you still wanna make those vlogs, make that content about your day-to-day -day life, your routines, things like that, there are like non-niche niches that you could put yourself into. Now these are things like clean girl, homebody, busy nine to five corporate girl, small town life, aesthetic life, coffee lover. Now these are not really niches like health and fitness per se, but they're just like branding your day-to-day -day life in a certain way that will attract people who also live their life in that certain way. So if you wanna post morning routines, I would caption it morning routine as a busy girl who works a nine to five corporate job. And then other busy girls who work nine to five corporate jobs will relate to you probably watch your video and will be more interested in what you have to say because they can relate. Essentially, I'm saying to label yourself as something that people can find inspiration in, they can aspire to be. So as you can see, this is not a super niche or a super focus, but it is a little something that helps drive growth. And this goes in the providing value section because when you label yourself and create that brand and make it very specific, like the day in the life of a homebody, you are providing value to homebodies. But if you just caption and create a video like a day in my life, 
who are you? Who are you helping? Who are you providing value to? What is that value? But if you say a day in my life as a homebody and you show your favorite blankets, your favorite cozy sweaters, your coffee routine, things like that, people will find value in that who also like to live a homebody life. And the last thing I wanna say on this topic is that while I do suggest you're always creating content of value, if you're posting three to five times a day, some of your content can be a little less valuable. Now, I don't mean lower quality videos, but for me, I'm gonna use myself as an example, my high value content, the content that is providing lots of value, gets lots of saves, gets lots of shares, is like my what I eat in a day videos because people are saving those and really watching those for meal ideas and the protein counts and things like that. Or a lot of times in the beginning, I made informational videos on how I walk 20,000 steps in a day, how you can get that done, how it's actually not that hard, things like that. And people are saving those videos. Those are providing a lot of value. But I also mix in videos that I like to make that are not necessarily as much value, as much save worthiness, but that I like to create, that I find joy in. And for me, those are always my morning routines. I have loved making my morning routines from the minute I started this TikTok. I think it is so much fun to do. I love to watch them. I love to edit them. I love to add relaxing music to them. And that's the content I like to watch. So it's the content that I wanted to create. And in the beginning, these types of videos didn't really consistently get a lot of views or a lot of likes or drive a lot of followers to my account. They got a few here and there, but I continued to post them because that is what I wanted to create in hopes that the other content I'm creating, the valuable content, the more valuable content that drives followers to my account will continue to drive those followers and they get to my account and they see that I make these morning routines and my morning routines pop up on their For You page, on their following page, and eventually they see, oh, she makes this type of video too and they're pretty cool. And then they start to like them, they start to save them and people start to interact with that type of video more and more. And then they will hopefully gain traction and become a style of video that is not just something fun, but also is providing value. That was kind of rambling and on and on, but my point is you can still make content that is not as valuable, as shareable, as savable, if it's the content that you want to eventually be creating, because it's important to create that from the very beginning so people know what they're getting into when they start to follow you and they see what type of content you provide. So now as I'm reaching 10,000 followers, honestly, just over the past couple of weeks, these types of videos are creating growth and movement for me. I'm starting to see people actually engaging with them and liking this type of video, which makes me so happy. And it makes me feel like it was worth it in the beginning when I was creating this content and not really seeing much results from it. Another example of a type of video that is not the most valuable for my viewers is shopping hauls, Amazon hauls, things of that nature. But I like to share that content. So I still do it here and there because eventually I want people to want my Amazon hauls. I want people to want to see what I got in TJ Maxx or Target or whatever. So I do still share that content here and there just so that it's something that's in my rotation and people will see it now and again from me and eventually maybe they'll want it all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna try and sum up value. Essentially post videos that will provide value to your viewers, things that they will want to save, look back at later, comment for more information, and follow along with you for more information on the general topic that you're talking about. Number two, if you don't have a prominent niche, make yourself the niche. Describe yourself and your very specific day-to-day -day life and use that consistently in your content as your branding. And three, do not only focus on low value content, things like vlogs, days in my life, routines, things like that, because that is not gonna drive people to your account, to following you, to saving the video. However, you can still disperse that type of content into your rotation with your other high value videos, especially if that is the type of content that you love to create. Okay, moving on to consistency. Despite how valuable, valuable content is to growth on TikTok in 2024, I do believe that if you are not posting that valuable content consistently, you will not see the growth that you want to see. Sure, you'll probably see growth, but it will be much slower and you will not be growing that audience that is always looking for your content, expecting your content and watching you all the time. In today's world, I feel like with so many influencers and so much content and so much information that people are scrolling through all day long on all different platforms, people are simply not gonna remember you or want to follow along with you if you are not constantly bombarding them with you. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way, but think about yourself. For me, if I wanna follow someone on TikTok or if I'm going to follow someone on TikTok, I probably have to see them on my For You page at least like five to 10 times before I'm actually gonna make the jump to following them. So in order to show up on people's For You page that many times, you gotta be cranking out the videos. 
Also with TikTok's algorithm, they do reward consistent posting. So if you're posting over and over and over again, your videos will be shown out. They will be pushed out. And I'm like living proof of this because I have my account that I'm talking about right now with just 10,000 followers that gets more views and more likes and more engagement than my TikTok with 400,000 followers, my Wellness by K1 that I did not post three to five times a day daily on. So it's just, if you are posting the content every single day, the same type of content, the consistent content, people will expect it, they will watch it, they will follow along. Just think about the big examples. My big example of this type of content creator is Emily Kaiser. She posts probably three times a day since the day she started and people still watch her. They still care about her videos. And I don't think the same can be said for people who do not post that much on TikTok. It is just that type of social media engine. You need to feed it and feed it and feed it. Now, I personally like that it works this way because I like to feed it. I love to create videos. I love to create content. And hopefully if you are trying to grow on TikTok and are watching this video, you also feel that way because you definitely need a love for it if you want to stick it out because three to five times a day is a lot of content. So let's get into that. I have posted three to five times a day every single day since that first TikTok I posted on May 30th. It is now September 10th. Actually, I do say that with a little bit of a caveat. My weekend days are more like one to two times a day and my weekday days are like three to five times a day. I would say right now I'm at a consistent four times a day. That is what I've been doing for the past couple of months, four posts a day on the weekdays. And I'm gonna be honest, there were probably five days in this entire three months where I posted nothing, but five is even a stretch. I'm thinking more like three. I have not really posted nothing since I started. So I've said this earlier in this video, but I truly believe that growth is inevitable if you are posting valuable content this consistently. It honestly can't not happen. That's what I believe. Now growth will be different. It'll be a different pace and different speed for everyone. I do think that mine was relatively fast. I know some people blow up to a million followers in three months. That's not really what I'm talking about. I still think 10,000 followers in hundred days is pretty dang good. I'm very proud of myself for achieving this. And yeah, I think it was pretty Pretty good growth and I think that's because of the niche and the content I focus on which is like I've said multiple times before food fitness wellness health all that and that is very shareable savable content like I've said a thousand times in this video it's just an area that a lot of people look for advice in similar to something like fashion if you're posting a lot of fashion hauls and what you wear in a day things like that people are gonna save that look back at that content I know I do that I save a lot of videos to like my shopping's collection so I just think depending on your niche and your focus growth will be different if you don't have a super savable niche it'll be probably slower especially if your main focus is just kind of you and your life Okay, now for the big question, how? How do you post three to five times a day on TikTok with content of value? Now, the answer is that it's hard. It's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of energy. It's very time consuming to post this much content. If you don't think that you could achieve three to five times a day, I would recommend at least two times a day. I don't think one time a day is enough unless each piece of content is like a bomb of content, like so informational, so entertaining, so everything. I mean, you could do one time a day and get growth. It will just be slower. I also think that people will not care about you as much ever if you're only posting one time a day. I simply think that's the truth with TikTok. Okay, so how do you do that? Here are some of my tips and tricks for posting this consistently. First, pick a style of video that you can probably post most days every single day without fail. For me, this is a what I eat in a day video. Now this is good for two reasons for me. This is very easy content for me to film. I just film my meals. Sometimes I film bites of me eating it, things like that, but it's very easy. I don't really have to create anything. I'm just documenting what I eat in a day. So it's very simple for me to create. And then the other half of it is that people really like this style of content from me. It is one of my most high value pieces of content every single day. So it does drive growth and it's easy for me to do. So this is my staple piece of content. If I don't have time to film anything else in a day, I'm going to be filming a what I eat in a day. Okay. So now for when it comes to discovering what this piece of content will be for you, it will take experimenting. So I would just recommend starting out film some content, some styles of videos that you are interested in filming and see what sticks, see what's easy for you to do, see what you feel like you could do consistently on an everyday basis and just kind of go with that. It also doesn't have to be one style of video. It could be like two or three that you rotate, but there's always something for you to fall back on. That is what I think is a good idea to come up with those like staples, one, two, three staple content ideas that you can always fall back on and film consistently. If you are too busy to film anything else or you just, you know, you're feeling in a creative rut, something like that. 
Okay, sorry about the quick location change. The lighting is going in and out of my room, so I'm trying to find a good spot. But the next tip is creating content buckets. So I've seen a bunch of people on the internet over the years refer to this as content buckets. So essentially what it is or what I'm referring to is just a type of content, a long list of content that you create like to create, things like that, and then you can always pick and choose from that list. So my list and what I currently have in rotation is walking vlogs, walking video, voiceovers, what I eat in a days with music, what I eat in a days with voiceovers, morning routines, night routines, days in my life, food videos, quick recipes, grocery hauls, weekly workout roundups, weekly walking roundups, Amazon hauls. So those are the videos that I can think of that I consistently make. Of course, every now and again, I try something new and either I feel like it was fun and it did well and I'll add it to the rotation or it was just a one-off. I had a random idea, so I made a video, but it is good to have a list of content that you like to create and will always be creating. And then I do put that into use with a little bit of a schedule. Now, when it comes to scheduling with TikTok, I don't really think it's a platform that you really need to have a super set calendar, content calendar. I don't really think that it is that type of platform. I think it is a more of the moment in real time sharing life as you live it type of platform. So I don't create a content calendar months in advance. What I do every single night before I go to bed is I go in my notes app on my phone and I write down the videos that I want to film the next day. I pretty much go into the list of content ideas in my head. Like I have a bank of content ideas in my head. I just choose like three to five and I put them in a list for the next day. And then when I'm planning these out for the next day, I do also like to do a variety of difficulty levels. So I'll do like two videos that I think are easy for me to film, won't take a lot of effort, and then two that require a bit more effort just so I can balance like the workload. We've gone over consistency and value. And like I said, those are the big two things to take away from this video. But there are a couple of other things I wanted to go over before I end this video. And first up, it is to listen to your audience. So once you experiment with a couple types of videos and you post them a few times, each type of video, you will see what does well, what performs, what people are saving, what people are following you from. So make sure you look at your analytics and you listen to your audience, listen to what they're liking, and then do more of that. It's very simple. If you find a style of video that people like, just keep doing that again and again and again. But it's also important in addition to sticking to those videos that people like to experiment with new types of videos because you never know what might stick and you never know what's gonna work for you. And then lastly, do not get discouraged. I think that that is the biggest thing with TikTok or one of the biggest things. The algorithm definitely has a mind of its own. And I think there are things you can do to like help the algorithm work in your favor. And that is pretty much posting a lot, posting all the time, constantly giving them content, feeding the beast, if you will. But it's also important to know that sometimes the algorithm will just work against you and that's okay. It will always swing back in your favor if you're consistently posting valuable content. Also, I don't think I've said this at any other point in this video, I do think that even if you take a week, two weeks, a month break, your TikTok growth will be like changed forever. It's really, you really do need to keep giving it content. I think even a little break like that will affect your views. And I think that's why people talk about getting stuck in like view jail with only 200 views or they're not getting the likes they used to or anything like that. And I think it's because consistency really does mean all the time. Like, I do not think you can take a break. I think those big creators that we all look towards and who all have really found success did not take a break. So if that's what you wanna be, you can't stop. And then a good example to show that the algorithm really just does what it wants. And sometimes you can't control it is two morning routine videos that I posted last week. So one video I probably posted on like Wednesday has over 5,000 likes, 30,000 plus views. And then another video that I posted on Friday, same exact morning routine, same exact elements, same type of music, literally the same thing it has maybe a hundred likes and a thousand views. So those are two completely different results from the exact same type of video. Now, if I just posted like the last one, I would think, oh, people don't like my morning routine, but I know people do like my morning routine because a previous one got like 5,000 likes. So it's just, sometimes it'll do good, sometimes it'll do bad. You just gotta keep posting and then always know that like eventually if you're in a little algorithm slump, it'll go back up if you keep posting. The bottom line is there that if you have slumps, consistency will always win out. Eventually it'll go back up. I've noticed lots of peaks and valleys over the past three months and I always get a little bit down and discouraged when it's in a valley. I think that's just like human nature, but every single time I've had a Valley, there's been a peak. So just stick with it, stick it out. And I think all will be well if you're experiencing this. I think the worst thing you can do is give up, obviously. 
Okay, so that is everything I had written out to discuss today in this video of how I grew my TikTok account to 10,000 followers in three months, just about 100 days. I actually love talking about this type of stuff, sort of like behind the scenes in social media, social media strategy, how to grow. I feel like I have a lot of experience on it and I'm very passionate about it as well. So if you guys like this type of content, please let me know because I would love to create more types of videos like this. I can go into anything that you guys are interested, like any part of this video that you would like more information on or another video on, just let me know in the comments and I would be happy to make one. Also, if you found this video and if you found my channel, you found me just because of the TikTok growth video, feel free to check out the rest of my channel. I have lots of book content, lifestyle content, food content, daily vlogs, weekly vlogs, everything of that nature. So give it a little look. You might like what you see and hopefully you will subscribe and follow along with me and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.